Yo guys, and welcome back to another video. Now, I know it's been a super long time since I've uploaded. We're going to get into that in a different video, but today is going to be a Photoshop tutorial. I promised this a long time ago, and we're finally doing it. I don't know if it's going to be, um, like, a series type thing. I'm pretty sure I can fit it all into one episode. It's not too difficult. Um, but today we're going to be showing you how to make a particular type of logo. Now, this isn't, like, specific towards anyone because, um... Anyone's logo can change because of the, the clipping mask or the mask clipping. Um, if you guys know what that is, or if you don't, we'll talk about it. Today, this is what we're going to be making over here on the left side. Uh, just an idea to show you guys the basics and how to do things. Um, it may look really complicated, but super easy. We're going to go through that one step at a time. If you guys do enjoy the video, please give a thumbs up. I will be uploading again soon. Once I'm out of school, I got like four or five days left. Um, and I should be out with a video talking about what's going to happen. So today we're going to start by using the phase logo, um, there's no reason for using it, I particularly like the phase logo because images fit on it really well, it's a solid logo, it's not too thin, it's not too big, it's a good logo to work with. All the links will be in the description for the images and the logo, and there will be a link if you guys want to download CS6, this is what we're using to Photoshop with. Also, uh, this will work with previous and older versions and newer vi like versions, but it, there might be a certain way to do things uh, different, so just follow along. Some things I can walk you through, certain ways to do it, different ways. Any questions, go ahead, drop them in the comment section, and I'll answer them the best of my ability. Okay, now to go ahead and start things off, we have our phase logo. Uh, we're going to need just a regular white background. Um, you guys can use that. Make sure to turn it into a regular image. And we're going to have the image that we're using here. Um, so just a nice floral background with some flowers. So to go ahead and start things off with our phase logo, what we want to do is make it 3D. Now the 3D is going to be the best because we're using uh, CS6, but it will do really well. I know how to some ways to make it look nicer, so if you guys follow along. Um, and detail is everything, so if you guys want it to look better, take your time. This is just a tutorial, so I'm not going to go in too in depth. So to go ahead and start things off, we have our two layers, the one that we just duplicated. So you right click, duplicate layer. Go ahead and click on the bottom layer and click on this little square in the corner. Uh, you can click on any one and it should bring up this toolbar up here. So what we want to do is make the image behind it a little bit smaller. So we'll click on the width, just double click on it, 99 and the height and click that 99. Just go ahead and click the check mark. Uh, now, I don't know this for Mac users, um, it might be a different layout, hopefully you guys can help each other out down in the comments section, but for Windows it's Control alt shift t and we want to click out around 18 to 21 times, anywhere in there, whatever looks best. Uh, I usually stick with 21. But yeah, go ahead and select the top layer and the bottom layer, hold sh uh, shift so you can select all the layers. Now we have our layers all selected, now just go ahead and right click them and go ahead and merge our layers. Uh, now we can't really tell the difference here, so we're just going to go ahead and double click on the bottom layer. And color overlay. Uh, I have mine preset the white. You can choose any color. I think white looks the best. Now the reason for this white image right here is so we can show the background, show different colors in the background. So we're going to go ahead and drop that in. Um, make sure we drop that on the bottom. And we're just going to double click on that and add a color overlay. Click on color overlay. Click on the little white square or whatever color, and I'm going to go with black. Now this just allows us to see the image and see what it looks like. Now we have a good 3D image. Um, we can go ahead and zoom in, and since we made it 3D by just copying and pasting, you're going to see some slight pixelation. And to fix that, it's not too severe because this logo is pretty good. Um, we can go ahead on the left side, and just go ahead and click the pen tool. Make sure you have your fill set to the right color, in this case white. And you're just going to literally click the corners. This is just a patch job, this isn't too much. And you can make the colors or the line look a little sharper. That wasn't too good. Just hit Control Z if you want to go back one step. And that looks a little sharper, but that's just uh, an example. It's not too bad here, so there's nothing we really have to do. We're going to go ahead and zoom back out. Okay, so for our next step, we want to add a gradient overlay to add just a little differences in colors and make it look like it has natural shadows, and this is where gradient overlay comes in. Now, we're not going to be able to do anything to it because we have a color overlay, so what you want to do is just go ahead and select your pin tool, and honestly, just put something, click enter, um, make sure it's on this image, and on your right side, take your shape that you just added, put it below the image, 
control select both of them just right click and sometimes they might have to rasterize the layer before you merge them so let's go ahead and merge layers so now it's a white color and it's not red so we can go ahead and double click on that now and gradient overlay uh, you're gonna have to turn off reverse if you have it on make sure your style is on linear and what I like to do is have the angle down make it look like the shadow is on the top part okay so in the next step we want to take our floral wallpaper uh, take the whole image just go ahead and drag it to the phase logo uh, we're gonna be using this a few times so make sure it's on the very top if you hold shift that will keep it won't distort it so try to get as much of it on there as possible that's pretty good right there and what we're gonna do is take our top layer and make sure it's selected go to the layer and create mask clipping now this is where you can do whatever you want so I'm gonna control Z real quick um, with this particular image if you guys are trying to follow what I'm doing uh, I like to go make sure you select it go to filter distort and I like wave you can do whatever you want here um, more or less and that leaves us with this really weird looking image but it doesn't matter because we're just gonna mask clip it so it goes on there really nice so like I said, uh, you can make the image bigger if you want to try to get more of it, more or less in there. Uh, that's good enough for me. Uh, so what we want to do now is select that same image and duplicate it. Click OK. And just drag it above the white image or the background because we don't need that anymore. That was just for looks so we could see the image was 3D. Select one of the corners, hold Shift, drag it out to keep... The, the composition the same or whatever so we don't distort it too much just click OK should go back uh, we can't really see it too well right now so we're gonna make sure we select that layer go to filters blur and I prefer Glossenburg blur I believe that's how you say it Glossenburg blur I can't even say blur i uh, you go ahead and select that I have mine on a preset of 2 uh, usually 2 to 2.5 it's whatever 2.2 uh, should work in this case and you can move that image around if you'd like. So now I want to go back to the red logo, the phase logo, the top part of this image. Go ahead and double click on that and we're going to make this image stick out. Another thing I like to do most is inner glow. Just go ahead and select that. Turn your capacity to 100 and your choke all the way up. Now the image sticks out. Um, I usually like a size of 4, just all personal preference. Uh, you can play around with this. Uh, another thing I like to do is add a little drop shadow. It shows like the difference between the layers click on drop shadow and remove the distance uh, so if we turn that on and off you can see a slight difference it's a uh, nice looking adds a little something different uh, you can go ahead and click OK on that now this is where your pen tool is going to come in handy this is where detail is key we're gonna go ahead and zoom in and you see how choppy that is now if we take our pen tool you can just select one corner to another Boom, boom. That fills it in, adds a much more solid line. And with these corners right here, they're a little cut off. You can just add a little something and it fills it in a little bit more. Uh, this is all personal preference. If you want to do this, you can't see it too well with this particular logo, but sometimes it will stick out. So click OK. You can do that to the whole logo, um, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, you can go through, especially on the bottom, it's really bad. And that's where you really have to get in there and take your time, but you can do that later. So we're going to go ahead and zoom back out. So our logo is coming together now. Um, everything I'm doing from this point on is all personal preference. I like to select the bottom layer right here. Add a little drop shadow. I don't like it how it comes out like that. I usually like to turn the distance off a little bit. Turn that on, you can see a little bit. Makes it fill in a little bit better. Now we have a pretty decent looking logo. Like I said, you can see the images are a little little bad and you can just go in with the pen tool and fix that. So what I'd like to do is go back to the main image and select the main part of the logo. So if we go ahead and towards the top uh, is called your, I don't know what this is called, a uh, quick selection tool. Sometimes you might have your magic wand tool on, just right click it, select quick selection tool. Make sure you have the plus on. And also make sure you double click the background layer and turn it to a regular layer. And what we're going to do is just select this flower 
right here, best of your ability. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna go ahead and cut that. I'm gonna go back to the face logo. We're gonna go ahead and paste it. Uh, we're gonna bring it down right above the image right here that is masked over the face logo. Uh, just go ahead and click layer and create a clipping mask. And it just adds a little something different to the image. Um, pick whatever side looks best. I think that looks best. Uh, it sticks out a little bit much, so just go into your filter. We can add some blur. Make sure that layer is selected. Collage and blur. We can add a little bit less just to make it stick out. Um, personal preference. Just go ahead and click OK. Oh, so right now we have the majority of our logo done. You can go ahead and fix in the, the edges. Something I always like to do is come back. Um, the setting right here called Curves. I usually like to go to Image, click Mode, and CYKM color. So it's like cyan and some other a different color selection. Go ahead and click that. It's going to ask you if you want to merge your layers. Um, you can merge, definitely. Just click OK. So we have our image, and that looks pretty nice. And now we want to click our curves. So it's going to be different. You can go like the whole majority, or you can go color by color if you want more detail. We're going to go up, just add a little bit more blue or cyan, go to magenta. I usually like to go up either way. Um, we don't want too much of that. Or yellow. I don't use the yellow too much. I usually like actually take the yellow down. That makes it look real nice. And when you mess with blacks, you only want to add a little bit of detail. Uh, too much or too little makes it look really weird. But it's all personal preference. Adds a little bit more shadow in between the images itself. Now if you want, you could add text at the bottom. It's up to you. Uh, we're not going to do that in this image, but you can make it 3D the same way. Uh, we'll go ahead and type Nova in here. Don't really like that text. Uh, Captain America will work for now. Looks decent. Make sure you try to center it to the best of your ability. Uh, like I said, you can make it 3D. Um, some certain things I'd like to do is just click on one of the squares. And this little image at the top of my screen, go ahead and click that. And you can mess with certain wrapping or certain arcs or stuff like that. I usually like to use arc. Um, but in this case, I don't have the overlay. So what I usually like to do is take the selection tool or this rectangular RQ tool, select a little bit of the logo, edit, copy the merged, whatever, and just go ahead and paste it. Selection tool. And we can drag that over the image. Uh, make sure uh, your image is above the text and just go ahead and create a mask clipping. Control select the text and the image, right click on it and merge your layers. Just go ahead and double click on that. And same thing we're going to do is add a little bit of inner shadow or excuse me, inner glow. Click inner glow, um, you know, move your choke up, your capacity. Um, with this you're going to want to turn the size way down. You can add a drop shadow. Like I said, I don't like the drop shadow sticking out, so. This isn't the best text effect, but it just adds to the logo. And that's basically it. Like I said, you guys can go ahead and zoom and get in there real, real close and fix this right here. Super easy. Just go ahead and select the selection tool or the clipping tool. Now with this, if you add like a triangle, it's only going to fill in the right side more. So make sure you try to do squares to where it connects. And it will come in with a much broader, more straight line. Um, zoom back out. And we can go ahead and compare that to the original logo. Let me go ahead and find that. I got a bunch of random things on my computer, so. Esports phase logo. Uh, so the only difference that we see here is like, anytime you do this, it's gonna be different, it's gonna be unique. Um, so I added a little bit more wave in this image. Um, but overall, pretty similar. The flowers um, and the colors are a little bit different. But uh, overall, I think it came out pretty well. Hopefully, you guys all enjoy. Uh, we're gonna say no to that. Quick zoom in.
a pretty nice unique logo. I'm thinking about doing just a original traditional phase logo for the next video. Tell me if you guys would like to see that. It follows the same ideas, but we're going to be using um, some gradient overlay if we do do that. So if you guys all enjoyed, might have been a longer video, um, but the concepts and the things that you learned from this video can be duplicated, you know, making it 3D, adding the inner glow, um, and fixing up the, the pixels that are distorted. Uh, it's not going to look as good as, you know, 3D if you made it the image 3D. Um, it's not going to look good if I do it in here. <laughs> Uh, but if you had Cinema 4D or did it like Blender or something like that. So hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Like I said, we'll be making a comeback to the channel soon. Hope you guys all enjoyed and peace out.